Hi, my name is Johnny Blackwell. I'm an IBD Research Fellow at St George's University of London. And in this IBD club, I'm going to be talking about when to stop mesalazine in IBD. This talk is based on an excellent review by Chapman et al called Withdrawal of 5 aminosalicylates in IBD. And it was published in APT this year and is open access. So I'd really recommend having a read. So before we ask when to stop 5-ASA, we should probably ask why stop 5-ASA? Well, there are several reasons. The first is cost. Now in managing IBD, I think we get used to using incredibly expensive biologic drugs, and that gives us the impression that 5-ASA is cheap. But actually, a course of 5-ASA can cost more than a thousand US dollars per year, which is a lot of money if the drug is no longer needed. Another reason to stop 5-ASA is adherence. There's evidence that the more pills you take, the more likely you are to miss doses. So this is definitely worth taking into account for patients on more than one drug. Obviously, in UC, there are some people who won't respond fully to 5-ASA and need escalation. But it's also worth remembering that 5-ASA is still frequently used in Crohn's, despite not being recommended because of its lack of efficacy. So that's probably another reason to stop if you've got the wrong disease. And of course, patient choice will always be key to this discussion. So is it safe to stop 5-ASA when escalating? This is some really interesting data looking at 5-ASA in combination with azathioprine. This RCT looked at patients with UC in remission after steroids, and patients were randomized to either azathioprine or combination therapy with azathioprine and or salazine. As you can see on the Kaplan myograph, the rates of relapse were almost identical in the two groups. Now there is a caveat that patients in the combination arm had worse adherence. So this isn't necessarily gospel, but the study really highlights the point we talked about earlier, that more pills might mean worse adherence. So what about when you escalate to other drugs? Well, there's good evidence that outcomes in UC aren't any better in patients who carry on with 5-ASA after being escalated to anti-TNF, vedolizumab, or tofacitinib compared with patients who stop their 5-ASA when they're escalated. So the AGA guidelines currently recommend that when you escalate to a biologic or JAK inhibitor, you can stop the 5-ASA. So now, when I review a patient with UC who's been escalated to other treatments, but is still on 5-ASA, this is what I see. You've got 5-ASA here at the back doing very little at all, while letting the other drugs do all the work. What about stopping 5-ASA monotherapy? Well, this RCT by Ardizone looked at patients who were on 5-ASA and in remission for at least one year. And they randomized patients to either continuing 5-ASA or switching to a placebo. You can see that among patients who had been in remission for less than two years at the time they were randomized, those who switched to placebo were much more likely to relapse than patients who carried on with 5-ASA. But in patients who had been in remission for more than two years, stopping 5-ASA didn't significantly increase relapse rates. Unfortunately, we haven't got time to look at all the evidence in this video, but luckily Chapman et al have produced this brilliant algorithm about when to consider stopping 5-ASA in UC. I'm going to draw your attention to this box. The authors have come up with four risk factors that suggest stopping 5-ASA is not a good idea. And they are younger age, under 40, extensive disease, so right-sided colitis, a history of multiple flares, and as we already mentioned, being in remission for less than two years. That's all we have time for, unfortunately. Do check out this excellent review. And thanks very much for listening. Bye-bye.